is one of this possibility which I'm particularly attracted uh, to, which is that these little things that float around in the universe, these rem- black hole remnants, which are white holes, are actually dark matter. Space contains many mysteries, but few rival the enigma of white holes. Imagine a cosmic object that spews out matter instead of sucking it in. Theoretically, these white holes are the time-reversed twins of black holes. Their entrances are impossible to breed. Their properties defy physics, yet they're integral to Einstein's equations. For decades, white holes were deemed mathematical oddities, but some now suggest they could explain the birth of our universe. What are these ephemeral gateways? Do flickers in the cosmos betray their presence? Join us as we explore the puzzling physics of white holes and hunt for any evidence of their existence. From the minds of Einstein and Hawking to the farthest reaches of space and time, this is a mind-bending dive into the dark side's mysterious counterpart. White holes contradict what we know of physics, yet the math doesn't lie. To comprehend these paradoxical objects, we must first explore their better-known twins, black holes. Black holes cannot be directly observed because no light escapes. Anything that passes too close, including light, gets pulled inside the boundary known as the event horizon. But we can detect them through their gravitational influence on nearby gas clouds and stars. Black holes come in various sizes, with one common formation process being the collapse of massive stars at the end of their life cycle. This collapse condenses the star's mass into a tiny space, resulting in an incredibly dense and powerful gravitational field. These are known as stellar black holes, with their mass potentially reaching up to 20 times that of the Sun. It's quite possible that our galaxy, the Milky Way, hosts numerous stellar mass black holes. On a grander scale, we have supermassive black holes. These colossal entities boast masses that exceed the combined mass of one million suns. The formation of these black holes entails the direct collapse of gas, leading to the birth of even more massive black holes. This process circumvents the conventional formation of stars and is believed to have been active in the early universe, sowing the seeds for the creation of even larger black holes. Scientists have confirmed the presence of a supermassive black hole at the core of every significant galaxy. For example, our very own Milky Way galaxy hosts a supermassive black hole known as Sagittarius A, star with a mass equivalent to roughly 4 million suns. It could fit within an extraordinarily large sphere capable of containing a few million Earths. All right, now that we have a somewhat good idea about black holes, what in the cosmos are white holes? White holes are hypothetical regions in the cosmos that operate in a manner that contrasts with that of black holes. Just as nothing can escape the gravitational pull of a black hole, nothing can enter a white hole. White holes were initially perceived as products of general relativity, emerging from the same equations that give rise to their collapsed star counterparts, black holes. However, more recently, Certain theorists have wondered whether these paired distortions of space-time might actually be two facets of the same phenomenon. In the language of physics, a white hole is related to a time reversal of a black hole, comparable to viewing a video of a falling ball in reverse, to observe a bouncing ball. While a black hole's event horizon serves as a point of no return, a white hole's event horizon represents a boundary beyond which nothing can enter, an area of space-time reserved for the most exclusive of memberships. It's a region unreachable by any spacecraft. Objects located within a white hole have the ability to depart and interact with the external universe. However, due to the impenetrable nature of its entrance, the interior remains disconnected from the past of the universe as external events have no influence within. James Bardeen, a pioneer in black hole research and a professor emeritus at the University of Washington, commented on this interesting aspect, stating, somehow it's more unsettling to envision a singularity in the past that can influence everything in the outer world. Einstein's field equations had a seismic impact on the field of physics in 1915, and until now, scientists have been coping with the aftermath. 
Einstein's hypotheses provided a revolutionary revelation regarding the nature of reality beyond simply clarifying gravity's force. The backdrops of space and time, far from being unchanging, possess the capacity to curve and fold in response to the mass of celestial bodies, such as stars and planets. This realization prompted a quest to determine the extent to which space could withstand the influence of matter coursing through it. Physicist Carl Schwarzschild made a groundbreaking discovery within just a year of Einstein's equations. He meticulously analyzed how space-time bends around a single mass, represented as a solitary ball. Within his solution lay the foundational concept now known as a singularity, a spherical mass compressed to an infinitely dense point causing space to coil tightly. This coiling is so intense that it isolates the area from the rest of the universe, creating uncharted territory defined by an event horizon that disrupts the traditional correlation between cause and effect. Black holes, the most prominent examples of singularities, are regions of space that are so deeply distorted that there is no conceivable escape. While the external universe can influence the interior of a black hole's event horizon, the opposite doesn't happen. In 1960, Martin David Kruskal, a mathematician, broadened Schwarzschild's black hole description to encompass all areas of space and time. His extended framework included a reflection of the black hole singularity, but he didn't know it was important at the time. As more people learned about black holes, a name was made for their theoretical counterparts. It took 40 years to understand black holes, and only recently has the focus shifted towards white holes. If both are essentially singularities, you may ask, how are white and black holes different from each other? Well, the white hole is, in a hand-wavy sense, the inverse of a black hole. So, in a black hole, you have an intense gravitational field that pulls things in. You've got a one-way membrane called the event horizon. You cross that event horizon, and then you are captured. You can't get out of that black hole. Gravity has got you, and your future is destined to be at the center of the black hole, regardless of what you do. A white hole is the complete opposite of a black hole. It's almost like an anti-gravity force, continuously expelling material. When dealing with a white hole, there's an event horizon, a boundary, where material from the inside crosses it and is ejected into the universe. However, you cannot enter a white hole. In contrast, with a black hole, you can move inward, but not outward. With a white hole, you can move outward, but not inward. Since white holes are theoretical, what observable evidence might confirm them? The insights of scientists like Roger Penrose suggest that a white hole could act as an exit for a black hole in a separate universe, acting as a wormhole. As a result, material could enter a black hole in one universe and then be ejected into another universe via a white hole. Scientists have searched for spots where matter and radiation seem to flow into our universe from unknown sources. However, there are currently no clear white hole candidates. Since the 1970s, when Stephen Hawking realized that black holes emit energy, physicists have engaged in discussions about how these entities might eventually diminish and fade away. The question arises, if a black hole evaporates, what becomes of the internal record of all the matter it absorbed? This presents a riddle, as general relativity does not permit the information to escape, while quantum mechanics prohibits its erasure. We don't know how black holes meet their end. Physicist Carlo Rovelli said, How does a black hole die? We don't know. How is a white hole born? Perhaps a white hole signifies the demise of a black hole. The two questions fit together intriguingly, yet the transition from one to the other challenges the equations of general relativity. Rovelli, a pioneer in quantum loop gravity, which aims to surpass general relativity by conceptualizing space as constructed from Lego-style particles, is at the forefront of this endeavor. The framework he and his colleagues employ lets him present a scenario where a black hole shrinks to such a tiny size that it no longer obeys the intuitive rules regulating celestial bodies. Quantum randomness takes over at the subatomic level, potentially causing the black hole to transform into a white hole. The gravitational intensity of a white hole, even one as small as a human hair, 
would be negligible, as explained by Hal Haggard, a theoretical physicist at Bard College in New York. However, within its minuscule size, it would hold an expansive region capable of preserving all the data amassed through its prior interactions. Although too tiny to attract nearby matter into its orbit, this white hole might still exhibit the stability required to eventually release the entire collection of data gathered during its previous existence. According to this concept, in the distant future, when stars have faded and black holes have waned, white holes could eventually become predominant across the universe. As Haggard speculates, future observers may be able to discern these objects as relatively substantial particles. However, these days are far away, trillions of times greater than the present age of the universe. It's the most extraordinary time frame ever encountered in physics. Well, the answer isn't exactly yes. We have several intriguing speculations about some rather strange phenomena out there that might hint at the presence of white holes. But let's be honest, there isn't a smoking gun that we can confidently say that's definitely a white hole. However, the lack of observational evidence may stem from the fundamental arrow of time. Our universe appears to have a one-way time direction, starting with the Big Bang and expanding forward infinitely. This asymmetry favors black hole solutions over their time, reversed twins. But some radical theories attempt to embed white holes into the cosmos's origin. We have a good understanding of how black holes form in the universe. When a massive star reaches the end of its life, its substantial mass collapses inward onto its core, giving rise to the birth of a black hole. Our comprehension of the process of black hole formation and their interactions with the surrounding environment is based on Einstein's theory of general relativity. However, when it comes to understanding the concept of white holes, it's crucial to recognize that general relativity doesn't dictate the direction of time. Its equations maintain symmetry in time, functioning equally well whether time progresses forward or backward. Imagine capturing the formation of a black hole on film and then playing it in reverse. In this scenario, we might witness an object emitting radiation and particles. Over time, this object would experience an explosive event, leading to the creation of a massive star. This concept aligns with the idea of a white hole, which, according to general relativity, is a plausible phenomenon. The theoretical framework of general relativity allows for the existence of white holes. However, their absence as observable entities prompts an important question. Why don't we see white holes in our universe? The answer lies in other areas of physics, like thermodynamics and electromagnetism, that provide insight into how our universe functions. The second law of thermodynamics states that entropy, or disorder, increases over time in closed systems. In simpler terms, the degree of disorder tends to increase as time passes. For example, imagine putting a piano into a wood chipper. What comes out is a jumble of broken parts. This chaos in the system has increased, and it obeys the second law of thermodynamics, which is all about increasing disorder. Now, if you throw random bits and pieces into that same wood chipper, you won't get a complete piano. Why? Because that would mean things are becoming more organized, violating the second law. Complex structures like living organisms can form, but only at the expense of greater disorder elsewhere, such as within the solar system, but you won't ever get a whole piano out of a wood chipper, no matter how hard you try. This is where things get interesting. According to thermodynamics, we can't take a black hole and expect to get a white one, since that would mean order is increasing. While general relativity allows white holes, thermodynamics says no. For white holes to exist, something unusual would have had to occur early in the universe. This would require a process for embedding white holes into the fabric of space-time itself. Their formation would avoid violating the second law, since white holes would have existed from the beginning of time. Unfortunately, white holes would still face a significant stability issue. They would still possess gravitational force and draw material toward them. However, nothing could successfully make its way across the horizon. The moment anything, even a tiny particle of light called a photon, came close to a white hole, its fate would be sealed. If this particle neared the event horizon, it wouldn't manage to cross it, causing the system's energy to surge dramatically. 
Over time, the particle would accumulate so much energy that it would trigger the transformation of the white hole into a black hole, essentially ending its existence. There's a theory of gravity known as the einstein carton siyama kibble theory, which is based on the principles of general relativity. It includes something called torsion, which accounts for the spin of particles in quantum mechanics. It proposes that, under certain conditions, collapsing matter on the other side of a black hole's edge could bounce back and create a sort of bridge. This bridge leads to a new universe, like a baby universe, growing inside a black hole. This idea suggests that the Big Bang might have been like a big bounce when our universe started growing from a minimal size. In 2012, a paper suggested that the Big Bang itself could be thought of as a white hole. The event of this small bang would occur abruptly, resulting in the rapid ejection of all the contents within it. Unlike black holes, white holes are not always detectable. We were only able to observe their effects during the event itself. Many scientists, however, disagree with the idea that the universe was created by a white hole spewing out matter. It is said that this is contrary to the idea that matter cannot come from outside a white hole. Numerous theories exist, but have not been able to concretely identify the existence of a white hole. Given the lack of cosmic candidates and stability issues, most physicists agree that white holes probably cannot exist, but their conceptual value endures for peering into singularities and the hazy frontiers of relativity. White holes remain hypothetical anomalies, more quantum thought experiments than astronomical objects. Their reality seems improbable based on our universe's fundamental arrow of time, yet their allure persists. Perhaps one day, an eruption of particles will reveal a glow on the cosmological horizon, pointing to new realms of space-time yet undiscovered. For now, white holes exist only in equations, the enigmatic twins of black hole. So what do you think? Is there a possibility of white holes existing? Or is it just theoretical? And what if the Big Bang was actually a massive white hole? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel, and as always, Thanks for watching.